Hello, it's me, Professor McCoy. Welcome to week one, music production. The history of music production began in basically 1877 when Thomas Edison invented the phonograph. It's basically a sheet of tin foil wrapped around a cylinder drum, which turned by a handle, both rotated and moved, and that produced sound and music. After Thomas Edison, we had the barrel organ, which was a French mechanical instrument, consisted of different components of wood, often highly decorative, as the same kind of principle as a pipe organ, but rather than being played by an organist, the barrel organ is activated either by another person trained a crank or by a clockwork driven by weights or strings. A person, or sometimes a trained animal, that played the barrel organ is known as an organ grinder, hence turning the crank. After the barrel organ, we have Robert Joe Meek. He was an English record producer, sound engineer, songwriter. He pioneered the experimental pop music movement. He also assisted in the development of recording practices like overdubbing, sampling, and reverb. Meek is considered one of the most influential sound engineers of all time. He is one of the first to develop ideas such as a recording studio as an instrument. Meek was basically the first music producer to grasp the full concept and fully exploit the possibilities of modern recording. His inventive techniques separated him between analog and digital. He treated instruments and voices with echo and reverb, processing the sound through his homemade electrical devices. In 1993, Foreman session singer Ted Fletcher introduced the Joe Meek, a line of audio processing equipment. The tribute to Meek was due to his influence in the early stages of audio compression. The 2000s became the digital musical era. Between 1998 and 2001, the digital music revolution exploded. Networks of ways to share and market music through digital files became huge. By 2001, hard drive space had dropped significantly and that allowed pocket-sized computers to store large libraries of music. The iPod became immensely popular and many consumers began to transform physical recordings such as CDs onto computer hard drives. The iTunes Music Store offered legal downloads beginning in 2003 and competitors soon followed. Basically this allowed for you to have hundreds or not thousands of songs on an iPod versus 8 to 10 songs on a CD. Around the same time recording software like Pro Tools became very popular and there was found ways to make music recordings digital. This basically rendered multi-track tape machines obsolete. Getting started into music and music production. What is music production? Music production is the process by which music is created, captured, manipulated, and preserved so that it can be distributed and enjoyed. What is a music producer? A music producer or record producer assists an artist with their recording project. It's possible to be the artist on a project and the music producer on the same project, even though they're two different jobs. The artist makes the music while the music producer in a way it creates a way to collect that music to be distributed. Equipment used for music production often includes cables. You need XLR cables. XLR cables are primarily used for instruments or microphones. Quarter inch cable. Cables are typically used for analog signals, primarily audio. You can have quarter inch to XLR. This is a way to convert an XLR signal to a quarter inch signal or vice versa. There's the male end of the cable and the female end of each cable and you'll need to have the right cables for your project. 3.5 millimeter cable. This is typically for headphone ports that you'll see on the side of your computer or any kind of player you have. RCA cables. RCA connector is a type of electrical connector commonly used to carry audio and video signals. Soundboard. A soundboard has multiple channels. Each channel you can plug an instrument or a microphone into, and in that channel you can adjust its fader to control the volume of that. Each channel has gain. Gain can be adjusted to high, mid, or low, or a combination of those three. 
If you adjust the highs, that adjusts the high frequencies, mids are the mid frequencies, and lows are the low frequencies. Each channel has a mute button, which can automatically turn off the sound coming from that channel. Gain. Gain is a term for the amount of amplification applied to a signal by any process that increases its strength. Gain is measured in decibels, or dB for short. Vocal mics. There are tons of vocal mics, and vocal mics are usually built to record the frequencies of vocalists. Instrumental mics. Instrumental mics have a lot wider span of frequencies it can record, usually around 40 hertz to 15,000 hertz, which is low sounds all the way up to very high sounds. Differences between vocal and instrumental mics. The main difference is instrumental mics have a wider range of frequencies it can record, while vocal mics tend to usually focus on the frequencies that vocalists can sing. So humans can only sing in certain frequencies and instrumental mics have a better grasp at picking up those frequencies and making those clearer. Condenser microphone. This type of microphone is usually known as a capacitator microphone. It has electrostatic or capacitator technology to convert acoustic energy into electrical energy. Condenser microphones can pick up a much broader range of audio, so you don't have to be directly by it. You can be further from it can pick up large sections like an entire choir or an entire orchestra. Condenser microphones will need phantom power, which usually is a button on the soundboard that says V48. This adds more electrical current to the microphone to give it more signal strength. Thank you for watching. Hope you guys learned some stuff and God bless you.